I'm a little late. I had a few challenges with technical difficulties, but I think I got everything working now. And uh, that's the joy of being live you get, and and trying to do everything yourself. And uh, so sometimes we're a little late and here we are. But this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. So here we are and it's raining. It's blustery outside in Southern California. And we haven't had rain on a Sunday morning for years. I'm telling you, for years. Uh, and I know that because I met outside from March of 2020 through uh, May of this year. I met outside, and this is the first Sunday morning where we've had rain where I would have been challenged to be holding services outside. And the good news is we moved into the community center in Newport Beach, California in May. And it's a beautiful indoor facility with heat and air and there's glass walls so that people can still worship in their car and they can look through the glass and they can still participate. We still have the uh, the little FM radio shortwave, not short, but uh, it, it's a quarter mile range. So there's no uh, licensing required. And it's really easy to, to tune into your FM radio station. And that's what we have. We've been doing that literally since March of 2020. So I know this is the first Sunday morning where we've had rain to contend with that could actually close down our service because of all the AV equipment and everything else. But guess what? We don't have to worry about that. So this is really, really good news. I love it raining. Let the rain come. Let it come every Sunday morning now. It doesn't matter. It won't change us. We're going to continue to worship God and rejoice in the good news that we worship a risen Savior who was born on Christmas Day. And today is the third Sunday of Advent. And as a result of that, it is the Sunday of joy. We've got, we've lit our two candles the purple candles, and today we write, light the pink candle. Uh, we we don't have it set up now. Again, we were uh, challenged. You notice Don is not with me, I, and, and I know all of you noticed that and are really disappointed because it's a pretty face to look at as opposed to this mug. And uh, anyway, <clears throat> she's not here because she's watching our two-year-old granddaughter as my son and his wife are in making plans to move to Utah. So this weekend, uh, he took some, they both flew up to Salt Lake and they're picking out a home to move to. They're signing the contracts for his new business. My son is a chiropractor and he has been my primary care physician now for the last uh, two, two years, I think. And uh, so I'm really, really, really going to miss them. They're planning on moving the end of this month. And uh, so we're really disappointed to, that that's going to happen. But anyway, <clears throat> Donna is watching our granddaughter while they're in Utah, making the plans for their move. And he's opening up a chiropractic office. So if you live or know anybody who lives in the Salt Lake area, let them know that the world's best, and I'm not prejudiced, the world's best chiropractor is moving to Salt Lake City and will be uh, helping people with their health and experiencing wellness. Because that's the difference between chiropractic and mainline medicine. Chiropractic is all about health and wellness, and mainline medicine is all about managing your sickness. If you didn't understand that, uh, that's the way it works. So if you go to your if you go to your MD, he's more than likely not going to tell you to do a fast or get an adjustment. He's going to tell you to take this drug, and it'll probably be something you'll take the rest of your life, like a statin drug or a high blood pressure drug, or or, or the like. And most of America, that's the way they live, instead of seeking help. What chiropractors do, what my son has done for us, and what we have experienced through chiropractic is, instead of putting you on the statin drugs, they teach you how to get your cholesterol under control. Instead of 
giving you high pressure medication. The adjustments lower your high blood pressure, so you don't need it. So you become well, and you don't need to live on medicine for the rest of your life. And I could go on. One of the new, the new big medicine is for heartburn. And that's a heidel hernia and a chiro chiropractors know how to adjust that and eliminate the acid reflex and all of that stuff. Again, practicing wellness and wholeness and health as opposed to managing your sickness. Maybe you get what I'm talking about now. Just a quick little five minute education on, on, on mechanistic versus vitalistic health. But Anyway, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it on this, the third Sunday of Advent, as we look forward to the birth of Jesus Christ. And as a result of that, uh, I have a scripture that I'm going to read, uh, because again, this is a Sunday of joy as we anticipate the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who was born on Christmas Day. And the Christmas season doesn't start until Christmas Day. You know, people get really, conf the society, uh, our, our, I don't know, what do I call it? Our, our materialistic society has taken Christ out of Christmas in almost every way. In fact, I witnessed that just recently, a catalog came to our, our home of a store that I like to, a Costco catalog. I'm just going to say it like it is. Came to our house. We, we shop at Costco a lot. And we open up the catalog. And we go through there. And it talks about Hanukkah. It talks about uh, create the, the, the little things that they play, the game they play. But nowhere through the entire thing does it talk about Christmas nor Christ. It's winter, it's holidays, and that's because Christ is being taken out of society and out of the world because he is the savior of the world. And he comes to bring hope and joy and goodness. And as a result of that, there are people in the world today who don't want that. Here we are, and you're listening to me. I am an awake pastor. I understand what's going on globally, some of the moves that are taking place. And as a result of that, I come and I share the truth as I see it and the truth as we read in the Bible, because we, in the Bible, we have Judaic Christian principles and laws and commandments from God that we follow. In order to live the Christian life and live to be the people that God wants us to be, we follow those commands to the best of our ability. But we always fall short, and as a result of that, we live in the grace of Jesus Christ. The good news is that today is a Sunday of joy, and our scripture reading is, is about that, and I'll we'll be talking about that in a minute. I'll read our scripture passage here in a minute. Uh, I'm going to be reading from Romans, the 15th. Uh, chapter, and um, let's see, that's last week's, uh, there we go, Romans 15, I'm going to be reading 7 through 13, again, if, you, if you're if just chiming in now, Donna is watching our two-year-old granddaughter, because my son went to Salt Lake this weekend, and we're helping them out as they're looking for a new home to move to as he starts his new chiropractic office in Salt Lake City. So um, anyway, here we are on the third Sunday of Advent, the Sunday of joy. And if you if you wanna come to, to our church here in Newport Beach, California, it's comfortable, it's beautiful. It, you know, we have some fabulous music we're gonna be singing. We have um, just a, a wonderful group of, of people who, who are awake, who understand what's happening socially in the world today. And I'll talk a little bit about that later in my message. And uh, it'll be a, a time for you to be able to connect with other people. So anyway, if you're in the Newport area, if you're ever in the Newport area, come to our church service at 10 a.m. Uh, at the Newport uh, Community Center, which is at 100 Civic Center Drive. So if you just simply Google 100 Civic Center Drive, Newport Beach, California. It'll take you straight there. So um, <clears throat> anyway, I'm going to continue, and I'm going to be reading from Romans 15, starting with the seventh verse, 7 through 13. 
accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. Let me read that again. Accept one another, <clears throat> accept one another, <laughs> sorry, accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you in order to bring praise to God. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the Jews on behalf of God's truth, so that the promises made to the patriarchs might be confirmed, and moreover, that the Gentiles may glorify God for his mercy, as it is written. Therefore, I will praise you among the Gentiles. I will sing and praise to your name. Again, it says, rejoice, you Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Let all the peoples extol him. <laughs> and again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse will spring up one who will arise to rule over the nations. In him, the Gentiles will hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. May God add his blessings to the reading of this word. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time where we can come together and we can praise your name. You have called us to praise you. And so we give you thanks, oh God, for all things. Right now, we give you praise and thanks for the, for the pain we feel, for the suffering we're going through, for the tribulations we have. For we know that in you, all things work together for good to those who are called by you. Today, we have heard your call. You have accepted us. And so we pray, oh God, that you will turn our suffering into strength. You'll turn our, our pain into patience and, and praise. You'll, you'll turn our, uh, our, our, our suffering into strength. So, oh God, be with us. Touch our minds, touch our hearts, touch our souls. And allow us to feel your presence right now and continue to experience the inner joy that only comes through the saving grace of Jesus Christ. We love you, Lord. And we praise your name always and forever. Amen. So again, Donna is not with us and, and uh, she'll be back with us next week. And the only reason she's not here is she's watching our two-year-old granddaughter and uh, she is the cutest, most beautiful thing in the whole world but she's also two years old. And uh, that means she requires a lot of attention and, and she requires a lot of care. And, and so Donna is loving and taking advantage of every minute because uh, she's not gonna be with us much longer before she moves to Utah. And we're gonna miss her dearly while she's there. She, we just won't see her as much as we do now. And uh, so, so that, that's that's part of our our challenge with the transitions, but here we are living in a life that is unique to to us, and every single one of us has been has a unique life chosen, called, planned, designed by God from the beginning of time. God has known what's going to take place in your life, what's going to take place in my life, what's going to take place in your fathers, your mothers, your brothers, your sisters, your children, your grandchildren. God has known everything. When he created the heavens and the earth, he knew it all. He knows the challenges we face, and with it, he has given instructions for us to help us get through the tough times, and not only get through them, but to, to prosper through them and to use the suffering and the pain and the challenges we face to help us become better people, not bitter people, but better people equipped to be able to handle the stresses and the challenges of life. And so here we are, and I want to I, I want to share a couple announcements with you. First of all, Donna and I are taking a trip to the Holy Land. This will be the first time I have done this in over 10 years. I've been going to the Holy Land for over 50 years. 
when I first started going there, you could see the uh, you, you can see that Israel and, and the Palestine was clearly a third world country. Today, when we travel through Israel, you will not see a third world country. You will see a European country with, with, with uh, paved, good paved roads and curbs and sidewalks and, and uh, everything you would expect in uh, a, a, a first world country. It is beautiful. It is wonderful. The weather is almost identical to to Southern California, so it's so it has great weather, and and the beautiful thing about going to Israel and specifically on a Christian journey we go, or a pilgrimage is that we will specifically go and hit all the Christian sites. That's our goal, to hit and see as many biblical sites as we possibly can in the short amount of time we're there. So we're gonna get up every morning um, and we're gonna leave right after breakfast, hop on our luxurious motor coach, and we're gonna drive all over Israel. We're gonna see as much of it as we possibly can. We're gonna go to Galilee. We're gonna take a boat ride on the Sea of Galilee. We're gonna see Capernaum where Jesus spent most of his ministry time. We're gonna see the house of Peter where, where miracles took place. We're gonna we're gonna go to we're gonna go to Nazareth where Jesus grew up. You can see the home that he has as a child. Uh, you can see where where the angel came and appeared to to Mary and to Joseph and told them to, that they're going to have a, a baby and you're going to name him Jesus. We're going to go to to uh, the Jordan River and have a baptism. I mean, the list goes on and on. We'll see Golgotha. We'll see the Garden Tomb. We'll see the Holy Sepulchre. We're going to walk on, literally on the pavement that Jesus walked. There's no question that Jesus walked on these stones that we're going to stand on, that I'm going to teach on. And we're going to go to the hillside where Jesus divided the, the, the bread and, and the cup and fed 5,000 people. Uh, we're going to go to the upper room. I mean, it's just, it, you can't believe everything you're going to see. You're going to see things you didn't even know. You're going to come back. Uh, with an understanding and appreciation for the Bible that you could never possibly have understood before. So if you want to go with us, write us a note. Uh, my, my email is robert at schulerministries.org. Donna's is Donna at schulerministries.org. Schuler is spelled S-C-H-U-L-L-E-R. You got to make sure you spell it right, otherwise you're not going to get there. So anyway, we're going to leave on June 20th. It'll be eight days. We return on June 28th, and uh, we're flying on LL. I think it's LL Airlines. We're flying nonstop from Los Angeles. I think we, uh, I'm not going to say more about the flights. You need to contact our travel agency uh, to find out all about the flights. And uh, But we're going to be leaving those, and we're going to be there those days. And you're just going to be blessed. We're going to have communion in the garden tomb. I already mentioned baptism. And um, so it's it'll be a spectacular time. Don and I are going to be on the bus almost the entire time. I don't think there's going to be a time we're not going to be hanging with you for the entire duration of the trip. So it'll be, we're limiting it to one bus. And uh, so it's a very unique, special opportunity. And uh, we want you to come and we want you to join us. But you have to write to us, Robert at SchulerMinistries.org or Donna at SchulerMinistries.org, either one. And uh, we'll send you the information. So uh, the other thing we do every Sunday morning, and we're going to do that this morning, of course, is we collect an offering. And the way we collect our offering is... Uh, we have several ways. The, the number one way is for you to go to our website at drschuler.org. And on that website, you'll see a little box that says, I'd like to give. And you click that box and then you follow the prompts. Uh, the reason you want to give is, first of all, not to support us. You got to realize that is not the main reason you give to any church or any ministry. You give because 
God has called you to give. And in by giving, we receive blessings, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. For with what measure you give, it shall be given back to you. That's the, what the Bible says. So we give not because, uh, not because we want to receive back, even though you do, not because you want to support this ministry, which it does, but the main reason you give is as an expression of your faith and your trust in the hand of God to carry you through the struggles, the tribulations, the challenges of life. This, when you give, is a, is a physical, a, a direct example of your faith in God's abundance. You're, you're telling God, I have more faith in you, Lord, than I have in my bank account. I have more faith in you, Lord, than, I, than the struggles that I'm facing right now. I have more faith in you to handle my problems than I have in myself, than I have in my doctor, than I have in other people. I put my trust in you, Lord, and this is how I tangibly show my faith. So accept these gifts, O oh Lord, as an expression of my faith. That's why we give. And in the process, God uses that to support this ministry. He uses it to bless you. He sees your, your faith and, and he gives back to you in ways you cannot even imagine. That's why we give. So the first way to give is to go to our website at drshuler.org. And while you're there, spend some time and, and download some of our, our uh, podcasts you can do that. At, there's a link taking you to our Potomatic. Doc. You can go and look at our videos. We have tons of videos. Uh, and it'll, there's links to our, our YouTube page uh, that'll show you hundreds of videos. We have uh, blog posts that we've written that address different different challenges and frustrations from, from marriage to family to raising children to to all kinds of stuff. So we have all of that on our on our website. It's a very active website. You can enjoy it. And, and if you have any questions, you can you can write to me again at Robert at Schulerministries.org or Donna at Schulerministries.org. So we have prayed today. We've read scripture. Uh, we've taken an offering. Uh, the other way you can give an offering is if you don't like to go to the websites, if you want to mail a check, and lots of people do that, our address is 26 Canyon Island Drive, Newport Beach, California, 92660. That's 26 Canyon Island Drive, Newport Beach, California, 92660. And then the third way you can give is you can go to our Venmo account, and the Venmo account is Robert Schuler Ministries. And if you go to Robert Schuler Ministries and uh, on your Venmo account, you can also give that one. So we have people giving through all three of those. And uh, and if there's another way you want to give, uh, we'll we'll do whatever we can to to support you in that endeavor. So let's see other announcements. I've talked about uh, I think all of the things that are important, and I want to I want to sh now share a little bit about Advent, and I want to sh talk a little bit about our scripture passage today because we read from Romans 15, and in the seventh verse of Romans 15, it says, "Accept one another, then, just as Christ has accepted you." And the words I want you to hear are these. Christ has accepted you. Did you hear that? I want you to hear that. Christ has accepted you. That is the best news and should bring the greatest joy that you could ever possibly imagine. Christ has accepted you. Think about all the different things you have applied to in your life. Sometimes you get rejected, sometimes you get sometimes you get accepted. And when you get accepted, how much joy doesn't that bring into your life? 
that's the goal is to to be accepted we want to be accepted we want belonging and here it says clear as a bell christ has accepted you i think about applications to college and, and the excitement a child gets when they when they get their letter i've been accepted uh i remember the time my my son who's a chiropractor who's now in Salt Lake City, whose daughter Donna is babysitting right now, when he first got accepted to college, he came to us and he said, Mom and Dad, see, you've got to realize this, this young man rebelled in high school. He didn't want anything to do with, with college. He was going to be a professional baseball player, and yet he was on academic probation because he didn't have good enough grades. So 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 when when he graduated from high school, he didn't graduate cum laude, magna cum laude, anything. He graduated thank the laude. <laughs> and Don and I said, thank the Lord he graduated from high school. Now he can do whatever he wants. And we thought, and he goes, well, I, I and the plan was, his plan was to go to junior college, get a few few grades, get a few classes under his belt, and then try and decide what he's going to do. Maybe he'd go to, uh, because his his idea, of, and maybe he'd go, I don't know. He was, he, he, was, uh, he was just a young man looking. And uh, I'll never forget when he came to us, he says, Mom, Dad, I've got good news, bad news. What's that? He says, the good news is, is I've been accepted to Vanguard College. We're going, you got into Vanguard College? How can you do that? He was on academic probation, but he was accepted. He goes, the bad news is you've got to pay for it. And of course we did. We told our kids, hey, we'll pay for your education. If you, if all you have to do is get accepted and go and we'll pay for it. And we did. So he went to Vanguard College and, and we don't know how he did, but apparently he, he did well enough and years later, he took a, he took, when he, after he graduated, he took a couple of years off and then he went to chiropractic school. And the thing that really ticked me off in chiropractic school, he says he graduated, graduated magna cum laude. He got a perfect score on his, uh, on his board exams. And that really ticked me off because He's a bright guy. He obviously doesn't have any challenges with learning. He could have done better in high school, so we didn't have to. We didn't have to just, just strive so hard just to get him to graduate. But anyway, he got accepted. What happens when we get accepted? It creates great joy, even if we decide we're not going to go. Even if we decide, you know what? I'm really not interested in this institution or that club or whatever it is that I'm accepted to. Just the fact that I got accepted is a tremendous sense of, uh, of belonging. Uh, 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 it's a pat on your back. It's a you're worthy, you're valuable. And what I want you to know, what I want you to hear in our passage today and why do we have joy, why do we give praise to God, it is because you have been accepted. You have been accepted by Christ. You have been accepted by God. And guess what? It doesn't stop there. You've been accepted, but now you have to make a decision. Knowing that you have been accepted by Christ, and I'm reading straight out of the Bible, it says, just as Christ accepted you once you've been accepted once you know this you have to take the next step and actually accept the offer just like you apply to college and i know of many people who have applied to to three or four colleges and then they look at the different colleges they have and they make a choice of the one they want the same way we need to make a choice to follow Jesus. And as we follow him, joy abounds and we can begin to rejoice in the fact that we have made the right choice. 
And from the foundation of the earth, God knew that you were going to accept, that you were he was going to give you this offer. He knew where you would be today. And so as, a, as an example of that, St. Paul gives us four quotes from the Old Testament. Because when we look at the, at the Bible, you see all the way back in Genesis, God created the heavens and the earth. They created them. And if you go and you look at the account, it's a plural account. In the beginning, we see Jesus and the, and the Spirit of God. We see the Holy Spirit of God on the face of the waters. The triune nature of God is in the Old Testament from the very beginning. And Jesus has always been. He is the Alpha and the Omega, without beginning, without end. He has always been, always is. And it is this Jesus who's prophesied from the very beginning in Genesis all the way through the Old Testament. And here, he so he quotes the Old Testament. This is why we can rejoice. This is why we can give praise. This is why we can have joy. When I, when I hear the word joy, I don't hear happiness. I don't hear giddiness. I don't hear party talk uh, and party noises. What I hear when I hear the word joy is an inner, con, con, is an inner contentment of peace and hope and belonging and acceptance. And when I read through the Bible, when I read about joy, it's almost always tied with hope and faith and peace and, and following God's laws. And that's what I read when I read through the Bible. And that's what I see when I when I read the scripture today, it's giving thanks in all things and accepting that all things work together for good to those who love him who are called according to his plan. And so here we have the four quotes then as we accept the fact that we have been we have been accepted by Jesus. And having been accepted by Jesus, we give praise. Why? Because I will praise you among the Gentiles. I will sing praises of your name. That's in the Bible. And he's talking about you. And again, it says, rejoice, you Gentiles. That's everybody. That's the entire world. Rejoice, you Gentiles, with God's people. And then again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Let all the peoples extol him. And again, the root of Jesse will spring up. The root of Jesse is referring to Jesus. Jesus is the root of Jesse who springs up, who was born in Bethlehem. And in just a couple weeks, literally two weeks from today, we will celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. And we will realize and we will, we will sing from the mountaintops that Jesus Christ is born. And the root of Jesse will spring up, one who will arise to rule over the nations, and in him the Gentiles will hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy, and he does, and peace, and he does, as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Today, I ask you to accept, accept the gift that Jesus has given to you, that God has given to you. Accept the birth of Jesus as your hope and your salvation. You have been accepted by him. Say yes to him. Make room in your heart and allow the Holy Spirit to come in and take your heart and take it from fear to faith from frustration uh, to fulfillment, from, from anxiety to peace, and the joy that surpasses all understanding will fill your mind and your hearts with the knowledge of Christ and his goodness for you. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you're a God who loves and a God who cares. 
You're a God who has touched every heart and soul and mind with your confidence, with your assurance, with your peace, with your goodness. So we thank you, Lord, and we praise your name for all things always and forever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord grant you his peace. You're lying down and you're rising up and you're laboring and you're leisure and you're laughter and your tears until you come to stand before Jesus in that day in which there is no sunset and no dawning. Amen. God's blessing you, everybody. Go with him and uh, have a great day. Bye-bye.